So, dito na tayo sa module 2. Ayan. Dito na tayo sa module 2. Cybercrime history. May kli lang. So, ang mga pag-uusapan natin dito is when did cybercrime start, cybercrime's history, and the evolution of cybercrime uh, are easy to trace and coincide with the evolution of the internet itself. The first offenses were, of course, essential hacks from local networks to stake records. But when the internet became more developed, so did the attacks. We uh, tackled this na habang nagkakaroon ng development or improvement sa ating mga technology, dumarami rin ang lugar or avenues for the offenders or criminals to commit their crimes. Nadagdagan yung lugar kung saan sila pwedeng gumawa ng krimen. So, uh, in this lesson, you should be able to discuss the history of cybercrime and descri describe how the cybercrime arise in the Philippines. So, our modern society demands a degree of connectivity between citizens, businesses, financial institutions, and governments that must cross political and cultural boundaries. Digital technology provides this connectivity uh, katulad ng ginagawa natin ngayon, nasa nakakapagklase tayo through online, through Google Meet lang, di ba? And we are able to communicate with each other through other platforms. Messenger, Telegram, uh, baka may nagva-viber pa sa inyo, yung mga ganun. And give its users many valuable benefits. But at the same time, it provides a rich environment for criminal activity ranging from vandalism to stolen identity to theft of classified government information. Okay, first is hacking. Hacking is a term used to describe the activity of modifying a product or procedure to alter its normal function or to fix a problem. You gain access to another uh person's system or another installation system and then ay na nga, you will be able to alter its normal function. The term purportedly originated in the 1960s. Imagine, 1960s pa, kailan lang nauso ang computer sa Pilipinas. <laughs> when it was used to describe the activities of certain MIT model train enthusiasts who modified the operation of their model trains. They discovered ways to change certain functions without re-engineering the entire device. So, doon ang galing yung term na hacking. Hindi talaga siya directly uh, kung paano na natin ginagawa, ginagamit yung term na hacking ngayon. So, ganun nga sa mga model train enthusiasts para ma, uh, mapalitan nila yung ibang functions ng mga train nila or yung systems nila na hindi nakakailanganin na mari-engineer pa yung buong device. These curious individuals went on to work with early computer systems where they applied their curiosity and resourcefulness to learning and changing the computer code that was used in early programs. You know, madaming mga bagay ang nalalaman out of curiosity lang. Minsan, yung iba pa nga, dahil sa curiosity na yon nagkamali sila o may hindi sila inaasahang mangyayari, then yun na yung uh, pasimula nung mga bagay na meron tayo ngayon because of that mistakes. Some of their hacks became so successful that uh, they outlived the original product. Ayun na nga, mas nahigitan pa nila kung ano yung present na system na meron sila, such as the Unix operations, operating system developed as a hack by Dennis Ritchie and Keith Thompson of Bell Labs. To the public, a hack became known as a clever way to fix a problem with a product or an easy way to improve its function. Unlike today, we use the term hack parang may negative na dating sa atin, na nahack yung account ko. I mean, nangyaring masama sa kanya. Ganun ang iniisip natin. But before, it was a way to fix a problem. The malicious association with hacking became evident in the 1970s when early computerized phone systems became a target. 
technologically savvy individuals called freakers discovered the correct codes and tones that would result in free long distance service. Kasi dati, di ba, kung may mga relatives kayo na OFW, pag kumbaga, matinding effort pa ang gagawin mo para lang makontakt sila. Tapos mas mahal pa ang uh, gagastusin mo para lang magawa yon. But ito nga. They impersonated operators dug through Bell Telephone Company garbage to find, hindi find, to find secret information and perform countless experiments on early telephone hardware in order to learn how to exploit the system. They were hackers in every sense of the word, using their resourcefulness to modify hardware and software to steal long-distance telephone time. Ayun, dahil lang gusto nilang maisahan. Oh, ma magulangan yung sistema. Ayan, naging maganda naman ang resulta para sa kanila. This innovative type of crime was a difficult issue for law enforcement due in part of legislation to aid criminal prosecution and a shortage of investigators skilled in the technology that was being hacked. Actually, tayo nga, di ba, dito sa Pilipinas, nagkaroon lang ng anti-cybercrime law 2012. Eh, ang tagal nang nag exist ng mga computer. So, kaya yung mga uh, crimes that happened before 2012, hindi na pwedeng ma-prosecute. Kaya, sabi nga dyan, nahihirapan ang mga nasa law enforcement agencies. Alam nilang may uh, problema. They know there's something wrong, but they cannot do anything about it because of the legislation that we have in the present times. Uh, it was clear that computer systems were open to criminal activity and as more communications that are complex became available to the consumer, more opportunities for cybercrime developed. In 1986, the system's administrator at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Clifford Stoll, noted certain irregularities in accounting data. Inventing the first digital forensic techniques, he determined that an unauthorized user was hacking into his computer network. At doon na nga, uh, nagsimula din na magamit na yung term na hacking sa kung papaano natin siya ginagamit din ngayon. Stoll used what is called a honeypot tactic, which lures a hacker back into a network until enough data can be collected to track the intrusion of to its source. Kumbaga, uh, katulad nga sa honeypot tactic, inaakit ng isang tao yung isa pang tao para gawin yung gusto niya o para makuha yung gusto niya. Ganon din dito sa ginawa ni uh, Clifford Stoll. Uh, ginawa niya, nilure niya nga yung hacker para bumalik doon sa system. Kumbaga, mag-enter siya muli doon. And then, uh, papatagalin niya na nandun siya, nandun yung hacker sa system hanggang makakuha siya ng enough data para makilala na siya. Stoll's effort paid off with the eventual arrest of Marcus Hess and a number of others located in West Germany who were stealing and selling military information, uh, passwords, and other data to the KGB. The Berkeley lab intrusion was soon followed by the discovery of the Morris worm virus created by Robert Morris, a Cornell University student. O, studyante pa, ang naka-invento na. This worm damaged more than 6,000 computers and resulted in estimated damages of $98 million. More incidents began to follow in a continuous steady stream. Congress responded by passing its first hacking-related legislation, the Federal Computer Fraud and Abuse Act in 1986, compared to the Philippines, 2012 pa lang yung sa atin. Ang layo, di ba? The act made computer tampering a felony crime punishable by significant jail time and monetary fines. Okay, so this is the outline history of cybercrime. So it is impossible to know the exact origin of cybercrime and the very first instance in which someone committed a crime across a computer network. Kasi nga, dahil iba ang cyberspace, hindi siya ganun 
uh, especially before, hindi siya well documented. Etong mga nabigay nating example, eto na lang yung mga napabalita na o yung mga naging malaking issue. What is possible to know is the first major attack on a digital network. Yun nga. And then use that as a reference point of event in the evolution of cyber-based crimes. So in 1971, John Draper, a phone freak, katulad nung nabanggit kanina, yung mga freakers daw sila, uh, discovers that a whistle given out as a prize in boxes in Captain Crunch cereal produced the same tones as telephone switching computers of the time. Phone freak is a term used to describe computer pro programmers obsessed with computer networks. Ah, uh, sorry, with phone networks. During this time kasi, hindi pa talaga laganap ang paggamit ng internet. So, telephone systems ang nahahak noon or yun ang Sabi na nating uso o yun ang kaya nila noon. Uh, the basis of modern day computer networking. So that was that. He built a blue box with the whistle that would allow him to make free long distance phone calls and then published instruction on how to make it. The instances of wire fraud, fraud rose significantly. And then in 1973, a teller at a local New York bank used a computer to embezzle over $2 million. Oh, say. In 1978, the first electronic bulletin board system came online and quickly became a preferred method of communication for the cyber world. It allowed fast, free exchange of knowledge, including tips and tricks for hacking into computer networks. Pag sinabi natin electric bulletin board system, parang sa canvas natin, may merong announcement. So, andun lahat ng mga uh, bagay na dapat ninyong malaman. You know, bulletin board system. And then, in 1981, Ian Murphy, known as Captain Zap to his fans, was the first person convicted of a cyber crime. He hacked into the AT&T network, uh, that's a telephone company, and change the internal clock to charge off our rates at peak times. He received 1,000 hours of community service and 2.5 years of probation, a mere slap on the wrist compared to today's penalties and was the inspiration for the movie Sneakers. Kumbaga, noon, uh, magaan pa siya. Kasi community service lang, tapos probation pa. Samantalang ngayon, kulong talaga. In 1982, Elk Cloner, a virus, is written as a joke by a 15-year-old kid. It is one of the first known viruses to leave its original operating system and spread in the wild. It attacked Apple II operating systems and spread by floppy disk. Kinabutan niyo pa ba ang floppy disk? Alala ko noon, nagko-collecta pa kami ng ganyan. Iba-ibang kulay. Sobrang konti lang nang pwede mong masave doon. Kaya kada file, siguro mga tatlong files, document files lang ang masave mo. Kailangan, gamitin mo na siya agad or iprint mo na agad kasi kailangan mo nang mag-delete. Yun, kung wala kang pambili ng floppy disk. Kailan na lang naman ang flash drive. Eh. Okay, in 1983, the movie War Games is, is released and brings hacking to the mainstream. The movie depicts a teenage boy who hacks into a computer, government computer system through a backdoor and nearly brings the world to World War II. Uh, three. In 1986, Congress passes the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. This is in the United States, making hacking and theft illegal. In 1988, Robert Morris Jr., a graduate student at Cornell, released a self-replicating worm onto the Defense Department's APRANET. Uh, ARPANET. ARPANET yan. Uh, if you can remember yung worm, this is somehow, uh, sabihin na natin virus, na kung saan din duplicate niya yung sarili niya hanggang sa mapuno na yung memory mo. At kapag, syempre, napuno na yung memory mo, hindi mo magagamit yung uh, device. ARPANET is the precursor of to the in internet as we know it today. The worm gets out of hand, infects more than 600,000 network computer 
and lands Mr. Morris with a $10,000 fine and three years probation. Another slap on the wrist. So, mag pa talaga noon. Um, parusa when it comes to cybercrimes. Because maybe ang thinking nila, hindi naman ganun kadami talaga. Hindi siya talamak. Hindi talamak ang cybercrime. Kaya ganun lang sila kagaan. In 1989, the first large-scale case of ransomware is reported. The virus posed as a quiz on the AIDS virus and once downloaded, held computer data hostage for $500. At the same time, another group is arrested stealing U.S. government and private sector data and selling it to the KGB. Um, siguro familiar na, to, na kayo sa KGB. Uh, katapat yan ng CIA. And then, in Russia. Katapat ng CIA sa Russia. In 1990, the Legion of Doom and Masters of Deception, two cyber-based gangs, engage in online warfare. They actively block each other's connections, hack into computers, and steal data. These two groups were large-scale phone freaks famous for numerous hacks into telephone mainframe infrastructure. The proliferation of the two groups, along with other cyber gangs, led to an FBI sting cracking down on the BB BBSs promoting credit card theft and wire fraud. Nowadays, talamak na talaga yan. Hindi lang siguro dalawa ang cyber gangs noon. Ah, ngayon. Sorry. Ngayon. Hindi lang... Dalawa of cyber gangs ngayon. Madami na sila. In 1993, Kevin Paulson is caught and convicted for hacking into the phone systems. He took control of all phone lines going to an LA radio station in order to guarantee winning a call-in contest. At one point, he was featured on America's Most Wanted when the phone lines for that show went mysteriously silent. When the FBI began their search, He went on the run but was eventually caught. He was sentenced to five years in federal penitentiary and was the first to have a ban on internet use included in his sentence. Minsan, may mga special uh, punishment na specific lang sa iilang tao. In 1994, uh, the World Wide Web is la launched, allowing black hat hackers to move their product info from the old bulletin board systems to their very own website. A student in the UK uses the information to hack into Korea's nuclear program, NASA, and other US agencies using only a Commodore Amiga personal computer and a blue boxing program found online. Kumbaga, naging uh, simple lang yung ginawa niya, pero ang laki ng damage kasi mag-hack ka ba naman sa NASA? Diba? In 1995, my macroviruses appeared. Macroviruses are viruses written in computer languages embedded within applications. These macros uh, run when the application is open, such as word processing or spreadsheet documents, and are easy and are an easy way for hackers to deliver malware or malicious software. This is why op opening Unknown email attachments can be very risky. Macroviruses are still hard to detect and are a leading cause of computer infection. In 1996, CIA Director John Dutch testifies to Congress that foreign-based organized crime rings were actively trying to hack U.S. government and corporate networks. The U.S. GAO announced that its files had been attacked by hackers at least 650,000 times and that at least 60% of them were successful. In 1997, the FBI reports that over 85% of companies had been hacked, and most don't even know it. The Chaos Computer Club hack Quicken software and are able to make financial transfers without the bank or the account holder knowing about it. In 1999, the Melissa virus is released. It becomes the most virulent 
computer infection to date to date and results in one of the first convictions for someone writing mal malware. The Melissa virus was a macrovirus with the intention of taking over email accounts and sending out mass mailings. The virus writer was accused of causing more than $80 million in damages to computer networks and sentenced to five years in prison. In 2000, the number of types of online attacks grows exponentially. Music retailer CD Universe is extorted for millions after its client's credit card information was published online. Eh, ba, confidential na information yun. Uh, denial of service attacks are launched numerous times against AOL, Yahoo, eBay, and many others. Fake news causes shares of Emulex stock to crash nearly 50%. And then, ito, sikat to sa atin. The I love you virus spreads across the internet. Then, President Clinton says he doesn't use email to talk with his daughter because the technology isn't Secure. Dahil nga, talamak ang uh, hacking, ang online attacks. Hindi pa talaga mapagkatiwalaan ang mga email, sabi nga ni President Clinton noon. But now, it's already secured. Talagang kung de decidido na gumawa ng krimen, tsaka lang ma mapipenetrate yung system or yung network. In 2002, Shadow Cruise website is launched. The website was a message board and forum for black hat hackers. Diba? Para silang may GC. Members could post, share, and learn how to commit a multitude of cyber crimes and avoid capture. The site lasted for two years before being shut down by the Secret Service. 28 people were arrested in the U.S. and six other countries. In 2003, SQL Slammer beca becomes the fastest spreading worm in history. It infected SQL servers and created a denial of service attack which affected speeds across the internet for quite some time. Kaya nga siya, DOS, diba? denial of service. Hindi ka, hindi niya mabibigay yung servisyo na dapat niyang maibigay dahil nga sa mga ganito attack. Uh, in terms of infection speed, it spread across nearly 75,000 machines in under 10 minutes. In 2007, the instances of hacking, data theft, and malware infections skyrockets. The numbers of records stolen, machines infected rise into the millions, the amount of damages cost into the billions, and then the Chinese government is accused of hacking into U.S. and other governmental systems. Okay, cybercrime in the Philippines. By far, the most popular incidence of cybercrime in the Philippines is the I Love You virus or the love bug. The suspect in the case is a 23-year-old student from a popular computer university in the Philippines who drafted the virus with the vision of creating a program that is capable of stealing passwords in computers, uh, ultimately to have free access to the internet. So, the National Bureau of Investigation is finding it difficult to legally arrest the suspect behind the love bug computer virus because during that time, wala pang ang anti-cybercrime law. Uh, uh, there is no crime if there is no law punishing it. 